We're back, fools. Oh, in your face. What's up? Long I told time, you. no talk at you. Y'all look to the east on the third days, mother liquor. Because <laughs> here we come riding in on our steeds of truth. That's right, with the dawn. <laughs> <laughs> the dawn of truth. Uh, I'm light. slaying your boredom, <laughs> my <laughs> elven sword. <laughs> light coming in on a staff of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Some of those horses uh, really, really got screwed in that. Yeah, that didn't work out well for them. It's too bad. Blurry photos. Hey, everybody. I'm David Flora. I'm Dave Stecco. Good to good to be back. Oh man, we had our own emotional and intellectual helms deep with our <laughs> recording equipment. That's right. I threw a dwarf, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I used my bow <laughs> to shoot that elven sword. Not the most, um, I didn't think that through entirely, but it was the most metal kill. I got an award for it after the battle. Well, at least you didn't uh, surf down steps. Oh, God. (laughs) Anything to get the kids interested in literature. (laughs) The point is, we're glad to be here. We fought for this. We fought for you. We fought for the truth. Mm Mm-hmm. We fought some guy at the audio equipment store for a while. Oh, man, what a jag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for helping us, by the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so uh, we're hoping uh, this this is going to get out here uh, right afore St. Patrick's Day. Oh, oh. by the way, I uh, was supposed to set a stopwatch uh, to see how long it would take in my mind. I was, I was going <laughs> to was gonna see how long it took you to get to the Irish accent. I, it's going to slip in, is, yeah, is the like thing. I, I'm not even going to try. seconds is my yeah. guess on that. <laughs> I'm not even going to try for this one. It, it's probably just going to slip in while I'm talking. <laughs> That's nobody's fault. Uh, we apologize to our I- Irish friends, but uh, man, you guys sound awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the sincerest form of compliment and flattery. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're, we're going to bring you episode that is crammed to the brim and the gills stuffed stuffed to the gills yeah. dressed to the nines in irish lore and fun fun and things myths. from ireland myths myths are in there now you might have thought that our last episode was our gala tribute to irish culture <laughs> and i can't blame you <laughs> Up for to that. that point it was <laughs> <laughs> but no this is the real deal this is it and probably every episode going forward yeah <laughs> <laughs> Where's that pesky spring heel jack? <laughs> that, that simultaneous uh, Irish nobleman slash cockney mm-hmm. uh, troublemaker. That's right. And we'll <laughs> we'll be debuting our new sound effect, the spring heel jack slap. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever something goes really wrong. <laughs> good on, good on, good on. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> Let, let's dig in. Here. Let's do this. Let's just dive in. Um now uh right off the bat, in order to celebrate the St. Patrick's Day in the only way that uh David and I are allowed to genetically, we just pretend to be semi Irish, semi Irish. I'm a I'm an eighth Irish. Really? A fourth what am I? I'm a fourth Irish. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Fourth Irish, fourth Scottish. So uh so watch out. So so I'm a half badass. <laughs> <laughs> Chompy mouth. That that's uh, going to sound great to in your headphones. Yeah, you know what else is going to sound great in your headphones? What's this, that? This is the sound of how we're doing it this time. We are just drinking. We're going to drink <laughs> the whole time. And uh, I know what you're thinking. Well, if you start now, that's not going to really get you too far. Yeah, and we did think correct. of that. Yeah, yeah, we have already started. The math has been done by us and you at this we point. We are enjoying um, a classic Guinness. We, we're doing uh, the St. Patrick's episode here upright. Yep, and we're drinking. Oh, also, uh, hey, hey, Dave Flora, Slancha. Slancha. <laughs> I learned that from someone. <sighs> yep. Okay. Uh, we're we're gonna break this the sucker down into a few sections. Yep. And after each section is completed, we're gonna finish the rest of the Guinness that we have. Yep. And pour ourselves another one. Yep. So that could mean that we're slamming a whole Guinness if we're a slow drinker. Yep. We're, it's the key is to pace yourself in this. So uh, I guess we're offering you education, inebriation, and cetacean transformation. <laughs> <The> cetacean. <laughs> 
Slancha Bashar. <laughs> Bashar, here's wherever one for you. you. Are. <laughs> wherever, wherever your ley line takes you. <laughs> uh, great. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna tell you about uh, the real history of the real Saint Patrick. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what a lot of people say. Uh, we're gonna tell you a little Irish mythology, and then we're gonna launch into a list of Irish cryptids for you. Oh man, and in Ireland, rich with cryptids. Man, it is overflowing. It's like it's like a uh, a veritable crock of gold. Oh, but we'll get there. <laughs> um, let me let me start out with the same Saint Patrick here for you. Okay, so uh, Saint Patrick. Uh, we celebrate St. Patrick's Day on the 17th of March. Mm-hmm. Yes. Each and every year. He is the patron saint of Ireland, and uh, he's credited with bringing Christianity there. And uh, he's also credited with some uh, legends. like Legends? Yeah, like, uh, you know, banishing all the snakes from Ireland. That was mighty kind of him. Right, and there's another one that uh, that says he, he uh, could raise people from the dead or, or raised... A person from the dead. You know, there's some stuff that's it's associated with him uh, uh, miracle-wise. That's a hell of a maneuver, because as, as far as I recall, that was... It's a hell of a manure? Maneuver. Maneuver. That makes more sense. <laughs> what's more a hell, what's more a, sense? <laughs> that's, a, that's a hell of bullshit right there. <laughs> bull no, I, I, that was a huge bull stone. <laughs> I, uh, no, I, I always thought that the resurrection was, was, was the exclusive provenance of one J.C. Christ. Yeah. Who knew, man? Middle name Charlie, <laughs> middle name Whip Guy. Yeah. Um, so oh, Spring Hill Jack Slap. <laughs> <laughs> and you've already turned off <laughs> season two. Yeah. Well, it was short lived. <laughs> so St. Patrick, born in Wales or uh, maybe Cumbria, Northwest England. Mm. There's a there's a little little difference geographically. Yeah, for that it's a huge difference. It's a huge well, that difference. was a, that was a, a sarcastic little difference. Yeah, so it, it it was either Wales or or the Cumbria. Um, depending on who you ask, you'll get a different answer. Yeah, best way to get your ass beat in the UK is to walk around going, "So are you Welsh or Irish or Scottish?" Yeah, yeah. And uh, he was born maybe around 385 CE. Okay. So, uh, and that and that date varies, you know, within a few years as well. But uh, he wasn't named Saint Patrick, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, he was actually named Mayan Sukat, not Maywan Sucket, which some people pronounce it. Are you serious? I I mean, it's it's spelled with M A E W Y N, and then the last name is S U C C A T. So some people actually pronounce it Maywan Sucket. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure they're that's that's ridiculous. They're doing I'm it going uh, with on purpose. M- M- Mayan Sukkot. Yeah, I like that. Mayan Sukkot at 16 years old. We're jumping right right up to, uh-huh. to 16. F adolescence. Get uh, to it. Irish marauders raided his village, and he was sold into slavery for the next six years. Yeah, to uh, to a pagan chieftain in Ireland. Okay. Uh, Mayan. Uh, while he was a slave, he became a devout Christian. And then uh, one night he heard a voice in his sleep telling him to escape to France. So he did. I I guess it's that easy to get out of slavery. Hey, hey, I know you're a slave and happy and all, but maybe you should leave. (laughs) Why don't you go to France? It's so nice. You get across a, a, a major body of water from them people what bought you don't treat you nice. Hey, go back to sleep. Shh. <laughs> the yep. voice of God. <laughs> uh, so uh, in France, he studied at St. Martin of Tours Seminary, and he studied to become a priest. And later on, skip ahead, uh, I think it was like 12 years. Well, during that time, he adopted his Roman Catholic name, Patricius, or Patrick. Mm-hmm. And uh, he decided it was his duty to convert pagans to Christianity, and in particular, the Irish pagans. What had oh, so slaved th- him up? This is kind of cool. This is all. This is like some sort of a, a Christian Rambo, where he's gonna like remember me, right? Now remember the Lord. Yeah, blessing, <laughs> blessing. <laughs> so he became a uh, bishop of Ireland. 
and he was actually the second bishop uh, of Ireland after the first bishop went to Scotland. Uh, he became uh, bishop of Ireland hey, around 420 hey, C. <laughs> Maybe you should leave. <laughs> Y'all ain't doing no good here. There's some other guy. He's going to be just fine. He used to live here. You should leave. <laughs> Why don't y'all go to Scotland? They wear kilts. Hey, what, get out, go on, get. <laughs> y'all get out of here. Now go back to sleep. Um, <laughs> so the Druids uh, who held power in Ireland around then, they didn't care for him going around converting the Irish to Christianity because he was pretty successful at, at doing it. He established over uh, 300 churches and schools and monasteries while he was on mission in uh, in Ireland. That's pretty righteous. Yeah, and the, the Druids didn't like this. And uh, he was often arrested and imprisoned, but he always escaped. What? Yeah. Couldn't, couldn't keep that man behind bars. Now, he died on March 17th, 461. Again, um, that date ball is... Ballpark it. Yeah, that date is up for grabs a, a bit. But everybody agrees on March 17th being his death date. Okay. So that's that's so, why it's it's celebrated today. He he was then later what canonized? Is that what you call it? Yeah. Saint, sanctified. Yeah. <laughs> he was made a saint uh, a little, little later, and then uh, uh, that's uh, that's why he's now the patron saint of Ireland. And then the legends that surround him. Uh, number one, the driving the snakes out. Yeah, that's the big one. Um, he didn't actually drive snakes out of Ireland because uh, there haven't been found any fossil record of snakes from that time period. Uh, so either he drove the snakes and the fossils of the snakes out or there weren't snakes to begin with. And maybe snakes uh, was another word for the pagans and he drove the paganism out of Ireland. That makes a little bit more sense, although it's not very respectful towards the pagans. True. He used a, there, there's a legend that he used the shamrock as an illustrative parable and uh, people already saw the shamrock as sacred, representing uh, rebirth and eternal life, and the triple goddesses of Celtic mythology, Brigid, Eru, and the Morrigan. And it would have been uh, pretty easy to compare that to the Holy Trinity and use the three shamrock leaves. Now, given um, the Catholic Church's uh, uh, treatment of, of heresy or questioning, I would imagine then, then during that time, people who found four leaf clovers not lucky. <laughs> I don't know. Is Kate, that? Yeah, I don't know. I just imagine if they're like, well, what about this one? Get this out one's of got here! A, got an extra. Yeah, it's the devil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's that's the devil's lettuce right there. Yeah, that's good because you know the when we I do remember us talking about the black cat being actually lucky in some parts of like England. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. Could be. Yeah. Now he, uh, there's another legend of he had a walking stick that that uh, he would walk around with, and he would stick it in the ground uh, wherever he preached or evangelized. Uh, it was an ash walking stick, and um, one legend goes that uh, on one such side, he, it took him so long to get his message understood by the people that he was uh, preaching to that the stick actually took root and started growing. <laughs> So is that is that about his patience or about how dumb people are? I don't know, because that is that's that's kind of an insult, a pretty pretty solid insult to yeah to the people of Ireland there. Yeah, like, okay, all right, I'm gonna go through this one more time. <laughs> I just I just need you to stay with me, just 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 ten minutes. That's it, and then we can all go home. No, no, the Shamrock is the holy. Tr oh. oh. God. No, 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 no. We already we went over this. The fourth leaf is the devil, and if you find it, burn it. What do we do if we find five leaf clovers? <laughs> I we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. What happens if we tear a leaf off of a clover? It's only you, two leaves. <laughs> well, then you've killed a third of the church, and you're going to hell. Tell me again <laughs> about this Noah character. <laughs> I, I find like, that a wee hard to believe. I like the story where the guy gets eaten by the whale. <laughs> <laughs> and originally, I saw somewhere the color that was attributed to him was was blue. Ooh. It just got kind of uh, uh, changed over the years, morphed into the green, you know, from uh, the Emerald Isle imagery, I guess, of, yeah. of Ireland. Maybe like that. green is a cheaper dye than blue. <laughs> yeah, all you have to do is go outside and roll around. Right. <laughs> 
but uh yeah so that's that's saint patrick uh for you and um and that's that's why uh, St. Patrick's Day is is celebrated March seventeenth of every year. Yeah, it's and so whenever anybody says, "Oh, it's driving the snakes out," and by snakes I mean the damn dirty pagans and their filthy ways. Get out! Get out! That's that's what that means. Go back to Scotland, assholes! <laughs> <laughs> you stupid bastards! <laughs> yeah. Hey, pagan. <laughs> I know y'all's asleep and everything from that lecture. Wake up. Maybe y'all should go. That Patrick looks real mean. I think he means to do nasty with that stick. Why don't y'all go to the Isle of Man? Yeah, why don't you go and get out of here? <laughs> All right. Uh, so That's the spirit of Ireland. So uh, uh, St. Patrick is uh, is down yeah. for this episode. Oh, okay. Ching, ching. Which brings us to our next great chapter in this saga of Irish mythological history. That's right. And it's actually the mythological part. <laughs> Hooray. Yay. At this point, we're two beers deep because Dose. we uh, we had one before we started. Yeah. Just because it's the pump. like, you know, it's after work. We're yeah. going to have a beer. That's right. Um, it's Miller time. Only uh, uh, an actual good beer, right? Um, Whoa! And and look, listen. There's going to come a day when we need sponsors, and maybe we shouldn't. Because um, I would, I would literally murder a man in front of his own mother to be sponsored by Miller. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Yeah. All right. So the mythology. I'm gonna I'm gonna run through a bit of it as I was as I was going through this, writing some of this down. I was like, who really wants to hear this? <laughs> Uh, but there's <laughs> this a couple, seems inordinately boring. There's there's a couple nuggets in. It. I mean, I think it's it's completely fascinating. I think it's great. What I think you guys will think is, is fascinating the most uh, are these little golden nuggets that that we're going to pick out here for you. We sifted them out of a pan. We're we're like forty ers of knowledge. That's right. <laughs> All right. So to begin with, Celtic myth says that Ireland always existed and was the world. Okay. So there was no. There was no like. God created this, that, the other. It just always existed. Now, the the first race to inhabit Ireland perished in a great flood, which covered the island. Hmm. hmm. Flood much? Future podcast, winky face? Right. Uh, <laughs> the The second race to inhabit Ireland were called the, the Partholon. They were gods and created the grass and the trees and, and brought cattle and uh, prospered for over 300 years until they were destroyed by a strange plague. Hmm. Gods destroyed by a plague. They were gods that, that their gods didn't live in, in heaven or hell or anything like that. They, they, just... they actually walked upon the earth. So huh. they called them uh, divine races. Okay. That's, see, again, there's a, a real pragmatism to this. Yeah. I got all of it. I okay. I'm enjoying this. Yeah, and and I mean uh, these races also brought like agriculture and and commerce and things like that. So uh, the pragmatism doesn't just stop at just walking on <laughs> the ground <laughs> just by just by hanging out with the people. Right. Uh, the third race uh, that comes in after after the second race was destroyed by the plague. The third race, uh, the Numidians, also gods, came to Ireland and they brought sheep which were more popular than cattle. <laughs> yeah, easier uh, to carry. They were attacked by a race of monstrous sea people, the Favorians, uh, and they were eventually, uh, after after a while, they were eventually defeated by these guys. The The Favorians are uh, bad news. They they lived off the west coast of Ireland uh, and, and kind of like watched and waited for their turn to, to strike when, when these guys were weak, the Nemedians. See this this whole thing and like it it, it reads kind of like like an episode of like Stargate or Star Wars or Star Shows where <laughs> where like these people show up and they're like hey this place is perfect why wouldn't anyone else live here <laughs> well I guess I'll just unload these cows from my mystical oh god no <laughs> yeah. fish fish spear yeah ten years later oh this place is perfect <laughs> why wouldn't anybody live here bring the sheep Liam. <laughs> Rah, 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 rah. Yeah, bear. yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is an ill-fated island. The uh, the Favorians were uh, Favorians. <laughs> Great, <laughs> we've added one to the list. Um, <laughs> they were they were giants. Uh, some of them were half men, half animal. 
Uh, they there's talk of them having like dog faces. Uh, some of them had fish heads. They were monstrous. Okay. They they were they were all over the place uh, with with ugliness. And uh, yeah, they defeated the the Nemedians. And then uh, the fourth race to come in, called the Fear Volgs, were human and were eventually enslaved by the Favorians. Now, the, the Fear Volgs, they, 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 okay, okay. It's just, I feel, I just feel bad because no one left a sign that said warning Favorians. <laughs> but uh, eventually, I, I'm, of course, I'm leaving out a lot of detail, you know, with, with, really rich and, and fun stories. Yeah, but we're sifting nuggets here. But but these are nuggets for you, just so you have an idea. The Fear Volgs, they get enslaved by the Favorians. And uh, they end up being... I, I couldn't find if if they came in and they were sort of gremlin-y or goblin-y kind of, kind of creatures, or if they were eventually turned that way after enslavement and after this next race that's coming in. Well, if they started fighting. as humans, let's say they got turned over time. Sounds sounds good. They got engoblinated. <laughs> I think that that's a fair term, engoblination. Um the fifth race to come in. This is the one that you're you're probably going to hear the most if if you if you start digging digging up any, any The fifth ground. race who arrived to an island covered with engoblined humans. Right. And and because it was it was covered with this uh now the the stories that I read didn't say that they knew that the engobland uh, people were there, but they rolled in in this cloud of fog and mist that they created. Their magicians created, and it, it's it's almost like they wanted to conceal their landing on Ireland. And then once they did land, they turned around and burned their ships because that was their resolve to stay on the island. They, so that's they, like a, it was like do or die. That's like a really well crafted military invasion. It sure could be. These guys uh, were named the Tuaya Jadanan, and they were gods. And they they used their uh, their might and their magic uh, to battle these fear volgs and the Favorians. Did they have heroes of might and magic? <laughs> <laughs> they they didn't have uh, uh, people like the game, but they they did have uh, certain people. One of which video game jokes. I would like to uh, uh, throw at you here. Their champion and also their sun god uh, was called Lou of the Long Arms. Ooh, it's L E W, right? L U G H. Well. Or some variation. Shut my there. mouth. The point is, they literally had a hero right. well, of yeah. might and magic. Yes. Okay. Yes, and this guy, uh, if if you read about Lou, he is uh, he's like the perfect guy. He's he's the tall. He's blonde and and just he's chiseled and and he's great skilled listener. and he's he's a great listener. He plays chess. He plays mm-hmm. the the uh, lute. <laughs> and it's like you love him, but you're also in love with him, mm-hmm. and that's like a really important thing. I think a lot of high school songs have been written about this guy. Yeah. But um, he was their champion, and they end up battling the Favorians and the Fearvolgs. And I should take a moment to say, forgive me for some of these uh, Gaelic pronunciations, because... <laughs> I'm not forgiving you for any of them. Favorians! It's, uh, um, it's, a, it's a hard life out there for a, a quarter Irishman. <laughs> I'm going to start... A metal band named Fear Volg. <laughs> Funnily enough, there, there probably is already one out there because when I was looking for stuff on the Tuaya Jadan, uh, there is a uh, a band by the same name, and you can't get away from that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, band. Thanks, Obama. So um, uh, Lou, the sun god, uh, defeats the leader of the Favorians named Baller, who had they they call him a cyclops but they also called him a shot caller <laughs> i'm sorry i like you're trying to teach and i'm just putting my my d- in your in your knowledge bucket and it's my bad <laughs> you're 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 teabagging my fax man <laughs> <laughs> take that knowledge <laughs> yeah so uh baller was a, a pretty bad dude he Either was a cyclops, true to the sense, with one eye, or he he had one eye that was good and one eye that was under a um, patch made of, like, iron and and copper and gold or something. Something heavy duty that took people on either side of it to lift it, and then whoever stared at it or whoever looked at him in the eye immediately died. He's like one of these types of dudes. 
So are they, yeah, that's hard to con- convince a lot of people to to lift this heavy eye patch, and then somebody dies. <laughs> that's they they didn't use. He was like the A bomb at the yeah. time. They only they only used him when deploy the eye patch. Um, but Lou came in and uh, uh, threw a spear straight through his eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> fixed it. Fixed it. Uh, and so the Favorans and the Fearvolgs were driven out up into the hills and under the under the ground and off the west coast back to their uh, original island. And the Tuaya then were, were able to inhabit uh, Ireland in peace for a while. Thanks, Until, Lou. Uh, the sixth and final race came in, the Milesians, who were humans. Uh, they landed on Ireland, to which they were greeted by the goddess Eryu, who said, We're all full up. Get well, out of here. Well, she said, take our jobs. she said, you can, uh, you can come in. We know that you're, it, it's, it's the dawn of your age now. Just if you're going to settle here, name the island after me and take care of it kind of thing. But they, they did end up driving the Tuaya Jadanan out. And some stories go that not all of the Tuaya were killed or, or completely exiled, that they were shrunk and, and forced to live in the mountains, in the fields, in the trees. And that may be where you get the uh, fairy folk. Yeah, that, that, that comes come up. up in like five different angles of Irish mythology. This idea that people are forced to hide. Yep. That there are there are people there are there are people in the woods, there's people underground. Apparently there's the Foray Laven that are hiding in the water. <laughs> Favoyard. I said it. You you heard Foray me. Foray Laven. Hi. Nice Irish. <laughs> oh, we're come to make with the stabbings and the... Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> um, no, but but this idea, like, it, there's a lot of uh, uh, currents in, in Irish history that comes back to this, this concept of not only of invasion, but also of, of people hiding and, and changing over time as a result. And, and even more interesting, I mean, the, 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 the big book of Irish history is called the Book of Conquests and sometimes the Book of Invasions, mm. which is a hell of a thing to call your history as, <laughs> as a people. Um, but yeah, this this idea that that those who survived um, had to hide, had to dig deep, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and then over time they became the forerunners of, of the, the fae, the, mm-hmm. the fairy folk of, of Ireland. And since they were gods already, you know, they, they may not have died. And, right. And they still... Just be maybe maintaining their their powers and developing gold based uh, OCDs. <laughs> so, I, sorry if that was a that was a little boring. I I think it's it's really cool and and like I said, the whole story. I mean, it, it, to me, it, it's real real neat. But when you get to the Tuaya Jadan and fighting the the Favorians, that's a really fun. If you're into you know like the battle stories and things like that, there's a lot of detail that yeah we have to leave out. Cause... We really are blasting past some really interesting stuff. So if you find this interesting, like really look it up. It doesn't take a ton of work. Sure. And also, you're gonna seem like really really smart on St. Patrick's Day when you can be like, hey, I'm here to get faced as much as the rest of us. But let's pour a little one out for everyone who's uh, who's fought and died in Ireland. You know, like if you can just bust some genuine Irish knowledge, that puts you like ten thousand points above some jackass with an Aaron go f- yourself shirt. Right at the bar, it's gonna work out for you, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Let me let me go through a couple more legendary Irish sites. I just realized that all all of my enthusiasm is just gonna turn up as beeps in the final product. <laughs> Most of it, anyway. <laughs> Let me tell you what. If you can... And then, like, and then went... With a sandhill crane. <laughs> so let's talk about the Blarney Stone. Yeah. You know you know that thing. Everyone knows the Blarney Stone. I it's, don't think it, I don't think a lot of everyone's aware of it. I don't yeah. think a lot of people know really where the rubber meets the road on the Blarney Stone. Well, let, let's make that rubber meet some road. Mm-hmm. It's a blue stone block that's built into the battlements of Blarney Castle near Cork, Ireland. And uh, according, did I say? Yeah, we mentioned that Eriu was uh, uh, the namesake of Ireland. Yep, uh, the land of Eriu. Yep, which is uh, uh, how it became Ireland. Mm-hmm. Er, Eriuland. Eriuland. In- are you, that sounds Scottish, but... Well, everything I do is Scottish, and I can't stop it. <laughs> I'm not saying you sound Scottish. <laughs> it naturally sounds... Anyway, according to legend, 
kissing the stone endows the kisser with the gift of gab. And also, according to legend, the builder of the castle was involved in a lawsuit and he appealed to the goddess Cledna for help. She answered that he must kiss the first stone he saw in the morning. And he did so, and he won his case. So he built the stone into the parapet of his castle. This is the stone where you have to basically lean over backwards and have someone help you so you don't fall to your death yeah. so you can kiss kiss this thing. Yeah, and are, you have to be upside down. Mm-hmm. So you just arch right. your back way the hell back. And you like sit. You you sit on the stone wall and you you lean over backwards to get to it, and then you kiss it. Now, I have not been there. I would like to visit. I can tell you right now. No kissing. If I was the most superstitious man on earth, I still wouldn't kiss it because you put superstition in one hand <laughs> and a tourist attraction you smear your mouth on yeah. in the other. I've also heard that that people like to pee on it. How would how would you how do you get the opportunity to pee on it? That's like saying, uh, you know, it's really hilarious if you can pee on Mickey Mouse at Disney World. <laughs> I think Mickey Mouse has probably more security than the Blarney Stone does. I don't know, but 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 you Blarney know, Stone is secured by Irish who are drunk, it's furious. <laughs> anyway, I've just I've I've heard that yeah, it's probably not a good idea to to kiss it because there's mouths and in urine that's on there and who knows what else. So, yeah. But anyways, get some wax lips and then you look hilarious <laughs> and you're still, you know, lucky. Have you heard of the Giants Causeway? I have heard of it, but I don't know anything about it and when in the portion of this that I researched didn't come up and I'm very excited to hear about it. Good. I'll I'll tell you about it here. It's an area on the northeast coast of Ireland made up of around 40,000 interlocking basalt columns uh and that's that was formed a long time ago from Uh, volcanic eruption around the area. But legend has it that the heroic Irish giant Fionn McCool heard a challenge from the Scottish giant Benendonner that Benendonner could best Fionn in a fight, but couldn't get to Ireland to fight him because of the the sea in between. Typical pansy (laughs) ass. Oh, uh, I'd totally beat your ass, but my mom can't give me a ride, so... I like to fight a lot, but I can't cross that channel, laddie. Swimming's hard. I (laughs) I can't swim, I'm too big. I just, I'll pass for no. (laughs) Just for no. But know that if we fought, I'd have your arse. (laughs) (laughs) Fion, who was not a giant to back down from any challenge, decided to build a bridge from Ireland to Scotland. So he did so with these basalt columns, which was exhausting. So uh, one, one version of the story goes that once he got done building the bridge, he was standing over there in Scotland, he saw Ben and Donner in the distance, and Ben and Donner was so big, he was bigger than Fion was, and he was so big that, that Fionn knew that he was uh, in over his head because he was already exhausted. And he I immediately this regret building this bridge. <laughs> this was a mistake. What's that? Looks like a bridge has been built. <laughs> <laughs> I got to check it out. Oh, faith in Corin. <laughs> So uh, <laughs> so he hightails it home. And and he thinks up this clever plan with his wife, Una. So when Ben and Donner crosses the bridge, comes to Fionn's house, ready ready for some fighting. <laughs> Una Una says Fionn was out, and she invites uh, Ben and Donner inside. So she ends up uh, giving him some bread. She's a very nice hostess. Says, are you hungry? Here's some bread. Uh, she gives him some bread that had stones baked into it. And Ben and Donner uh, <laughs> starts eating the bread and is, is uh, breaking his teeth on these stones. But uh, he doesn't want to act like a, a bad guest. So he doesn't say anything. He finishes what she gave him. But all the time he's like, oh, my God, how are these people eating this bread you know, if and and Una's like, oh, this this is uh, Fionn's favorite bread. Oh, we we make this all the time. I'm sorry, it's so soft. Usually, we leave it out for a while to harden a bit. 
And and what she does is she takes the other half of the bread, which has no stones, and she starts shoveling it in her mouth, being like, oh, this is so good. Oh. And then she, she says, oh, wait a minute. I forgot to feed the baby. Oh, that's Bobby in there is hungry. I forgot to feed him. Just a moment, baby. And Mama's she, got some bread for you. She takes uh, some more of the bread that has no stones. And she goes in. She's like, oh, a bin and donor. Do you want to see the Bobby? And he comes in and he sees this huge. Uh, I'm just here to kick your husband's ass. I'm sick of your bad cooking. <laughs> Baby. Oh, oh. Worst vacation ever. <laughs> so he goes in there. He sees this huge baby in, in a crib. And the baby takes this bread and eats it like nothing. Now, what he doesn't know is that the baby is actually Fion in disguise. But Ben and Donner thinks, oh my gosh, if they eat this bread that is breaking my teeth and they're just shoveling in their face, no problem. And this guy's baby is this size... I, I'm in over my head. So Ben and Donner says, you know what? It's been great and all. I've got to be getting home. <laughs> I want to go before the tide comes in. and I kind of get up across that bridge. <laughs> so he takes off and Fionn's like, oh, thank goodness. Uh, ben and Donner ends up so scared that he tears up the bridge as he goes across it. So that's why there's only a little bit on, on the Irish side. So so the Irish take advantage of a few things here. One, Ben and Donner is an excellent house guest. He's very yes. polite, terri- mortally terrified of offending. Right. Also, really noble. He's just there to, to kick Fionn McCool's ass. Right. But he's all like, no, his wife's fine. Oh, of course I'll see the baby. I've eaten your shitty bread. <laughs> Man, I, I should kill you because your, your wife's such a bad cook, Fionn. How do you spell Fionn? F I O N N. A lot of people uh, call it Finn McCool, but I, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty bad sure it's bar operators. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's it's Fionn because you get some real angry Irish people when you start saying Finn McCool. Yeah, that I, would, I was just wondering if it was like Fane McCool or something. Oh, I mean, I I could be completely butchering it and sounding like a total arse myself. Well, but, me, me too. I'm I'm in with that. Um, F- Finn McCool in itself is a is a pretty pretty awesome name. It is, but I think I think Fionn McCool, I think he comes out as the villain. I'm going to say it. I think he comes out as the villain in this one because <laughs> he tricks and and he was he was all like, oh oh, you want to fight? I'll build a bridge, right? And here I come on my bridge. Whoops! I immediately regret this decision. Can you do this in the style of Favoyrin? <laughs> Oi, Scotsman! I'll make with the hurting. No, just you wait. Here comes the bridge making and the stones making and the walking across the water. Hey, Scotsman! <laughs> oh, there he is! Oh. Off in the distance! Oh, God! Oh. With the with the gianting and the huge bulging muscles in the... Oh, jeez! Make... Oh, no! Oh, Una! I did it again! <laughs> I don't know. He 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 was challenging, and it just made my blood boil. Go with the boiling and the anger, so, and oh God, the Scotsman! <laughs> Make God. me a baby. <laughs> I have the plan. <laughs> we'll make with the bread making and the stones having and the all oh, my teeth. <laughs> right. How the how on earth did we get here i don't know on the on our super hey did you know Irish we're over 50 tech? likes on facebook right now? <laughs> <Woo-hoo>! <laughs> thanks so everybody popular <laughs> uh great are we closing out folk we're, heroes we're closing out uh mythology and, and legend legendary stuff there all right that means we have to finish our pints of guinness for that's this right. round that's right did it did it oh my god flora uh let's let's re-up but boy, I'll tell you what, the, the, the David Flora that I just saw drinking was not the David Flora I saw for the last beer. I, <laughs> I, I waked the Kraken. <laughs> okay, here we which go. Is, which is a Liam Neeson reference. <laughs> no way, it's a Harry Hamlin reference. Well, original. Original, yeah, but this is the Irish episode. <laughs> That's true. We'll give this one to Liam. All right, you ready for uh, the section all about... 
Irish cryptids. Oh, thank God. Yes. Yes, Irish cryptids. And I, you know what, though? I'm, on one hand, I want to give like huge high fives to Ireland for having such a great crock of cryptids. Yeah. But I think that every country would. If we sat down and, and like really <laughs> You're s- right. sifted it out. But Ireland has a lot of famous ones. That's true. David, why don't you kick this off? I have to kick it off with the king of Irish cryptids. Oh, I am so into what you're about to say. The leprechaun. Oh! Per talk, kick it up. Leprechaun. All right, so what we've got is the leprechaun. Now, everyone understands the leprechaun. Um, They do. It's like a classic. No, I just want to sing again. <laughs> Maybe we'll close it out with another round of right. the Leprechaun song. <laughs> if you guys are electro techno DJs, we might need like some big some big kick drum on that. Maybe maybe we could dubstep it. <laughs> 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 Never mind. We we took care of it ourselves. We did it in studio. Um. Okay. So, <laughs> leprechauns. Uh, the name is thought to have come from uh the Irish Leith Brogan or shoemaker. Uh, the other origin might be uh as a Luacharma, which is Irish for pygmy. Now. The Irish, being a pragmatic people, were like, "Fuck it, we'll put them both together," <laughs> because they are very diminutive people. They appear to be kind of old men, and they uh, they they fix shoes in some versions of it. Yeah, they have a pot of gold, and they will lead you to it, but only if you can keep your eye on them the entire time. <laughs> which I imagine they're very good at misdirection. They're like mm-hmm. close-up magicians. What the hell is that? <laughs> huh? Oh! <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> it's huge! That's Saint Patrick himself! Oh, I do not think Mary's wearing knickers today! <laughs> Ooh! Oh. <laughs> Leprechaun! <laughs> you toyed with me heart and me wallet! <laughs> oh, the Eggman fell smack on his gob! Oh, God. Um, now, the leprechaun family, oh, yes, it is a family. It separates into two big groups. There are the leprechauns who go... And I tried harmonizing. It did not work. <laughs> And the, <laughs> the other half of the family <laughs> were the drunks. <laughs> They're the Cluricon, mm. who, who also have a song, but it's like, I f*** you. You're to fight me. Hi, Cluricon, bitch. I'll fight you. <laughs> No, there, there's another half of the family, the Cluricon, and there's actually a lot of debate about this. Oh, yeah? Are they two separate branches of the same family, uh-huh. or are they literally the same guy you caught at a bad moment? <laughs> <laughs> this is a real thing. Well, this is as real as a lab, you know. Yeah. It's a real asterisk thing. The, and the Cluricon... Real things aren't real. <laughs> haunts uh haunts cellars and and drinks smokes plays tricks yeah yeah it's like the bad boy leprechaun yeah in a way and there and the people say like oh well no if if you catch a leprechaun when he's good and trashed <laughs> you got a clericon <laughs> which is I don't awesome know, that kind of sounds redundant yeah just make him two separate things catch a leprechaun when he's good and trashed now here's another fun thing about clericons uh <laughs> they are they're known to be nocturnal Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, much like the leprechaun. Now, the leprechaun is known to be to enjoy drinking, but in moderation. <laughs> They're the ones who are like, please, drink responsibly. <laughs> Let the pot of gold be your own bed at the end of every night. And maybe, just maybe, the treasure will be a lady. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's the last time I try to do a PSA about drunk driving. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsored by Ireland's Council on Tourism. Stay somewhat sober. You make it late. Okay. Now, the Clericon is also known for raiding wine cellars and larders. Mm-hmm. Now, you might think, wow, this is a late night house invasion style burglar who thrives on liquor. How does he make his getaway? The answer is simple. The Clericon is known for harnessing the following. Sheep, goats, dogs, domestic fowl, house cats, <laughs> and other barnyard animals. I can't imagine a worse idea than being a tiny drunk man and trying to put a harness on a cat. <laughs> you try to put a harness on a cat when you're sober and it's, <laughs> it does not end well. Um, or a chicken. Can you imagine riding a chicken? I'll make me get away on this chicken. What <laughs> a <laughs> funk. Oh, hi, you're too noisy. <laughs> I've had better ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the leprechaun image has kind of been bastardized by uh, pop culture. Uh, I mean, to say the least. They're anything but the, the happy Irish wee person that's associated uh, with St. Patrick's Day and cereals. Leprechauns in general are, are they rarely get to three feet or a meter tall. <laughs> they rarely. Uh, the leprechaun tagging project of the uh, late 1960s revealed that there was a small, like 0.2% of the population who exceeded three meters. <laughs> Although the standard oh. deviation oh, for <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, they're solitary fairies, and uh, to everyone's knowledge, only men are leprechauns. Only male leprechauns. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, they're not solitary. It's just that they're all men, and <laughs> Irish culture isn't comfortable with that. Uh, they are uh, cobblers. They delight in shoemaking, uh, and being being cobblers is one of the oldest things about them. And there are some some stories that say that the name and and the fact that they're cobblers may derive from the Irish god Lou. You long arm Lou, the old long arm. The name then uh, would be pronounced Lou There, th- there's a ton of etymology for the name. I don't. Nobody can agree on where it comes from. That's to, because everyone who knows it is pissed drunk. <laughs> Originally, they wore red. Yes, that's that's one of the big things. They they had red jackets and hats. They wore uh, white breeches, black or white stockings, and if caught. They tried their best to bribe their way free with revealing where their crock of gold was. Now, their gold came from wartime stashes, especially like when the Danes uh, invaded Ireland. Uh, I guess a lot of gold was buried in crocks, and it's not always at the end of a rainbow. That's that's a saying to describe how hard it is to, to get their gold. Now, uh, another fun fact about the uh, the leprechauns is that it should you should you catch one, he'll offer you. He's got kind of a, a one two combo for you. Right. He will promise you great wealth if you let him go free, and he carries two leather pouches. Oh yeah, yeah. And now in one of these things, there's a silver shilling. It's but it's it's not just a shilling. Don't think he's low balling you here. <laughs> and it's a, a mystical coin that returns to your pocket every time you pay it out. So it's an infinite shilling. Right. As so long- so you take a you take a shilling out of this pouch and you reach in and pull another shilling out. Yeah. You reach in and pull another shilling out. Yep. It just keeps coming out. Yeah. So you're like the king of vending machines. And if you find a very, very patient person at Best Buy, you could buy a TV. Yep. One shilling, clink. <laughs> Two shillings. <laughs> clink. Anyway. But the other three shillings, <laughs> three shillings, all with the slow paying and the budgeting and the gums. And... <laughs> I, hey, Sony! I hate that I accidentally made this Way the accent go. of this podcast. Way to go. I did this. You add it to the list. It gets yeah. Played. Oh, there is no penalty box big enough for what I've done tonight. <laughs> now, uh, the other pouch. He will offer it carries a gold coin, which Ooh. he'll use to try to bribe his way out of the whatever predicament he finds him in. Now, here's the thing: this is where you get shafted by greed. Oh no! Take the silver shilling, people. Listen to me. <laughs> Take the silver shilling. Why? Gold's better than silver, right? Oh, it is. 
if it stayed gold, but once he gets once you get that coin and he disappears, it turns to leaves or dust or <laughs> ashes. Oh no. Or or like a, a lottery ticket that's a very obvious non winner. Uh, that's uh they're tricky. Yeah. The the green aspect of their clothing came about kind of like how the St. Patrick green came about. It's a just cheap dye. <laughs> it just uh, it, it's it's a, a symbolism thing for the Emerald Isle, but uh, yeah, I think that's I think that does it for leprechauns. Yeah, yeah. do you oh. do you remember? Did you ever see that the video? I, and I would be remiss if I didn't bring this up. I think that video of the yes, I know it, yes <laughs> in Alabama, yes, an entire neighborhood <laughs> held in thrall by the promise of a leprechaun caught in a tree, the promise. <laughs> Created by a lunatic homeless man who just wanted his magic flute back. Oh, I I don't I don't even remember. I just remember the drawing. They drew like an artist's conception of it, and it's, <laughs> it's this face and like a a rectangle and a square for a hat, <laughs> and 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 it had like a smiley face on it. And it's like this is a leprechaun. <laughs> Oh man, look on YouTube. Yeah, the, it is great. I think it's Mobile, Alabama Leprechaun or or Leprechaun in Alabama. That's all you have to look for. But it <laughs> it was it was on a new. It was on the news. Oh yeah. It wasn't when, just like somebody making a video. It was on the news. That's, and there it's not like there was like two people looking at a tree, like a neighborhood like it was like <laughs> when you see like Christmas there's that one house that's super decorated and all yeah. the cars come to see it. That's what had happened <laughs> because word got out there was a leprechaun up a tree. They want their gold, man. The, <laughs> It's although, hilarious. Although Check it out. The Al- There's nothing funnier than an Alabama leprechaun. Hey, y'all. Y'all want my gold? <laughs> y'all can't catch me. Ooh. Y'all fuckers think y'all gonna keep an eye on me? <laughs> <laughs> twing, twang, tweedly, twing. Nope. Yeah, yeah instead um, of that, it's just the Dukes of Hazard theme song. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Alabama. Y'all trying to get my gold, there's gonna be a Crimson Tide. Oh. <laughs> Roll Tide. <laughs> I'm sorry, Hi, Alabama. Roll Tide. Hi. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Alabama, but really, that video is awesome, and it does not paint you in a flattering light. Great. Let's move on. Let's 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 rip through these because I, I feel like we're getting a little long in the old tooth. Okay. Uh, but we actually we actually get a uh, a question we put out there in in the Facebook verse asking if anybody wanted to know anything about Irish lore, and our friend Shay uh, writes in and says, "Banshees, what's up with those?" Uh, Shay and everyone, uh, go back and listen to our uh, ghost taxonomy episode for uh, a nice little taste of the banshee. Oh but, yeah, but we'll we'll get you here. Also, we'll, we'll our you. acoustic album by the same name, Taste of the Banshee. <laughs> we just beget T-shirt ideas. Oh man, yeah, Taste of the Banshee. I want to make a tour T-shirt for that. <laughs> First stop, Mobile, Alabama. Also, I I am really proud of the fact that you and I have gotten to a point. Where someone like writes in, hey, what about a banshee? And we're like, oh, you know, we talked about banshees. True. Refer to this episode to learn more about banshees. True. <laughs> That's f- great. Banshees are the woman of the fairies yeah. uh, whose whale foretells the death of a member of one of the five major Irish families. The O'Neills, the O'Briens, the O'Connors, the O'Grady's, and the Kavanaugh's. I'm not going to do it. I've done it like in five podcasts. <laughs> the Rothschilds, <laughs> the Gettys. <laughs> Can't stop. I think I'm it's funny. Colonel. Four out of five of those have O apostrophe before them, but the Kavanaugh's, why Why not O Kavanaugh? Because um, there was a, a blood feud and they fought over the O and lost. Yeah, all right. I guess. Banshee comes from the Gaelic Banshe. S i d h e is she, and uh, basically that, that boils down to meaning people of the hills, which goes back to the Tuahe Jadanan. It's a term for the race of fairies uh, that may be the same or descended from the Tuahe. Yeah. Uh, so Bane she, the banshee appears in one of three forms: a young woman, a stately matron, or an old hag. I've only known of the old hag version. I didn't know that there was um, there was there's hotter version. Yeah, apparently it's real hot too. Apparently there there are they are pretty pretty spirits. Look out! But um, yeah, whenever one of those five major Irish families hears that wail, it uh, it means somebody in their family is going to die. So that's what a banshee is. Uh, let's go on to the puka. 
Puka. It's a shape-shifting creature that uh, most often appears at night as a sleek black horse with golden eyes. And in some places, it appears as a small deformed goblin. But, I mean, it's so a shapeshifter. Either a gold, so either a golden horse or a goblin. You know, some those are easily <laughs> misconstrued between each other. It generally likes terrifying travelers at night, scooping them up on its back, giving them a wild ride before uh, dumping them in a ditch or bog. That's a so, little spring heely. Yeah, 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 isn't it? That's a little spring heel jacky of it. Uh, it also roams farms, tearing down fences, scaring livestock, uh, causing general disarray. Any booby grabbing? No. Okay, no. just checking. Sometimes it can be benevolent, though, uh, giving advice and prophecy on November 1st or doing work uh, for kindness that has been paid to it. Hmm, Okay. Some farmers leave a bit of their crops unharvested for the puka's share on Samhain. And after November 1st, wild fruits were rendered inedible by the puka. So don't eat any blackberries after November 1st. Huh. Okay. Duly yeah. noted. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a real short uh, synopsis of the puka. Keeping on the, the horse shapeshifter train, <laughs> we have a kelpie. Now, I got to ask you right now, if you've got two different cryptids that are horse shapeshifters, how on earth do you make the distinction that there's two different ones? Their actions? How they get to one of the them cetacean wear, transformation? One of them wears pants. The other one just goes, goes for giant voluminous capes. Well, let me, let me throw this at you. This, this might help. Kelpie, also called a foie or marrows. It's pronounced F-Y-I. <laughs> <laughs> this I, I swear this this Celtic stuff it, it's great but <laughs> I guys I'm not mad at you to, but to, it's real tough <laughs> to try and get this right it's spelled F U A T H and Foif. I think it's I think it's pronounced foa all right I'll take all right. it all right uh, it's a water spirit and it's in the form of a black or white horse or maybe even a seahorse where it's top half is a, is a horse, the bottom half is a fish. Okay. Could be identified by its dripping mane and smooth, cold, seal-like skin. Okay. All right. Okay. See, now that that's good. That makes, it, that makes sense. Yeah. This one's fun. It can transform into a beautiful woman to lure men into a trap, or it can encourage children to ride on it where the Kelpie would bear the kids into a water source and drown them and eat them. Yeet. Eat everything but the heart or the liver. But it eats them. And uh, to do that, their skin, once once the person touches them, their skin becomes adhesive, and they can't get away yeah. from it. Wow. So that's a that's a Kelpie. Pretty, right. pretty bad guy. No thanks, Kelpie. Yeah. What about a Grogok? What do you got? Have you heard of Grogoks? No. <laughs> it sounds fun to say. That's why I've said it twice already. <laughs> you ready to finish the trio? Let's go. Grogok. Oh. Uh, Grogoks, originally, they were half human, half fairies, and they came from Scotland. And, to, to Ireland? Yeah, they settled in Ireland. Okay. And uh, they're, they're known throughout the north uh, in Donegal, um, but they're also found on, say, the Isle of Man. Oh. Um, and they're, they look like tiny old men, and they've got, they're like covered in fur. And they go nakers. Yeah. No pants for these guys. Um, Where's your britches, Krogok? But they also, they, they, well, in the place of clothes, they just have a bunch of twigs and dirt matted into their fur. Oh. Yeah. And they are not noted for their personal hygiene, which the previous sentence was sort of a spoiler alert, too. What with the matted <laughs> mud and sticks sure. in their fur. Uh, again, like Leprechaun, ain't, this is a boys club. You know, mm. ladies. Interesting. How, yep. I mean, how do they how do they survive? I'm telling you, it's all rainbows and shoe fascinations. <laughs> I mean, it's just society not being comfortable with the fact that they love each other. Mm -hmm. It's okay. And uh, the Grogox, same thing. Just keep reaching for that rainbow. Um, they are impervious to searing heat or freezing cold. Wow. But, but tepid temperatures oh, yeah. really bother ah! them. <laughs> <laughs> it's 72 and I'm dying. <laughs> um, they live in caves, hollows, clefts, you know, anything you can shove a Clefts. Grogok into, they're into it. 
a lip. <laughs> cleft lip. <laughs> <laughs> cleft lip. Yeah, they'll, that's one of the reasons they get that fixed surgically, because you get a Grogok in there, that's going to put the price through the roof. <laughs> um, Thanks, Obama. But they have the power of invisibility. Who doesn't? Uh, but they'll let some, sometimes they'll let certain people see them. They're, they're okay with that. They are very sociable. Um, and they'll even kind of get uh, kind of hooked on people. They'll just follow a single person around, help them out, do oh. whatever. Yeah. Um, the only thing they ask in payment, jug of cream. <laughs> hey, laddie, I've been out here being visible just to you. You have not said not about my smell. Appreciate it. But if you happen to have a, oh man, drop something to win a whistle, hoping for a jug of cream. Really had my heart set on a jug of cream. Oh, I like that sweet, sweet butter cream. <laughs> uh, sometimes oh. I, I drink it so fast it runs oh. down my chin. And I don't even stop it. I just let it happen. That's filthy. <laughs> the front of me smells like bad milk. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Could you have it frigid for me? <laughs> I hate that tepid cream. <laughs> <laughs> or boiling. So that's, that. I don't know. <laughs> What do you check do you your do? clefts? <laughs> leave your cream out at night. Yeah, you might get one of your own. Yeah. Then we got oh the my most god, amazing uh, Irish cryptid. If you don't have blood running down your chin and eye makeup on, go get some and apply it now because you're about to hear the most metal shit that has ever rocked your lame ass. This is the Dualahan. Mm hmm. Also, yes. also uh, it goes by many names, but that's the most popular. Also called a Gon Sion. This is a headless black cloaked rider astride a black steed who acts as a herald of death for certain poor souls. He holds his head aloft as he rides through the night. Now, the head itself has the consistency of moldy cheese. <laughs> <laughs> it has small darting eyes and a hideous ear to ear grin, and it glows like a soft lantern, which uh, ends up lighting his way through the night. Now, the horse that he rides on snorts sparks and flames, and the Dulahan spurs it on with a whip made from a human spine. Ah, oh, metal. Meadily, meadily, meadily. It's whip is a spine. It's whip is a spine. The Dolahan uh, stops his ride at either the soul's house or the spot where the soul will die and calls out the only word it can speak, which is the soul's name. Oh. Uh, Sometimes he wishes he was after a soul named Pizza. <laughs> He eats it, but it falls right to the ground because his, his head ain't attached. <laughs> uh, now, to witness his ride causes the witness to be doused in blood or blinded in one eye. Do not look upon the Dillahan. You will be doused in blood. Okay, uh, that's that's it. I'm done with doing that, but it's really fun. <laughs> All uh, locks and gates open when he approaches, so he can get anywhere. Nothing, nothing's going to stop him. The only weakness that the Dullahan has is an irrational fear of gold. Even, Reverse leprechaun. Yeah, See, that's even, why leprechauns have it. They the, hate Dullahans. That, maybe, maybe that's how they stay alive so long. The smallest amount of gold frightens them away. Yeah. How about that guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dun, 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 it's pretty, dun, dun, pretty, uh, a pretty badass. Yeah. Uh, Faye. Oh, man. Why isn't there a, a metal band named Dolahan? I I bet there is. There I just better bet be. there, there better is. be. I'd be pissed <laughs> if there isn't. The Dolahan uh, uh, appears in a lot of pop culture stuff like Castlevania games and things like that. Yeah. I think I've got a game on my phone right now that has... The Dullahan in it. Really? Yeah. So that brings us to the end of, of Irish cryptids for you. Oh, man. We rocked it. Now, usually we'll, we'll push our, our listener contributions, questions, and what a little bit further back. But this one kind of straddles it a little bit. So I want to get to this right now. Okay. 
um, the exceptionally talented Mel Evans of uh, friend of ours. A, yep, of an hour with your ex fame. If you don't listen to it, you really just should. It's so fun. She asks us. Uh, how close to typical Irish standard lore is the presentation of leprechauns in Darby O'Gill and the Little People? Hmm. All close. Also, how close does the movie get to the standard representation of Sean Connery? <laughs> you, you're going to have to field this one because I actually have never seen the movie. Oh, my God. It is one of Disney's finest. First of all, young Sean Connery. Young, really badass Sean Connery. Mm-hmm. And Mel. Thank you for the opportunity. I can't, I can't even do it now. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. Drew Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm I'm going to give you guys this. For any any Sean Connery impression, the the thing that'll just ice the cake for you, uh-huh. add a little uh, breathing at the end of everything you say. <laughs> Breathe out. So, show everything you say ended with some breathing through your nose. Oh, that's good. And that's notice, really notice in movies when he does that. Yeah. Hey, check out First Night. That's his That's his style. <laughs> I love Darby O'Gill and the Little People. It's one of my mom's favorite movies, so I grew up watching it. When Sean Connery looks at a guy and says, would you be putting the name of a liar on me? I'm like, you know Sean Connery is there to beat some ass in this tiny Irish town. Huh. But it, it's this movie that has like all these, I mean, kooky 60s effects in it. But they cover everything in Ireland. There's banshees. There's a spectral coach. Huh. There's leprechauns all over the place. There's the king of the leprechauns. You absolutely should watch it. You know, you should watch this while you're at your house, pre-partying for your, your St. Patrick's Day revelry. Huh. Sounds- much, yeah, much like listening to this podcast will get you ready to sound knowledgeable in bars and smart. Watching this movie... Might just give you enough Irish accent to pull off the deal. It's <laughs> worth it. Darby O'Gill and the Little People absolutely love it. As far as the accuracy, it's huge plot points in the movie. Hmm. I, it absolutely is. Well, it takes some license, but but all of these things are brought into play. It's it's just a great movie. Thank you, Mel Evans. And you know what? Extra thank you for knowing that movie exists. There's a reason <laughs> I think you're so great, and that's it. Uh, awesome. You know, uh, one of the things about the Dullahan is uh, there are some versions of him where he actually uh, drives a spectral coach himself. Oh, and it's made out of, like, bones and yeah. sinew. Yeah. Yeah. It has, like, six horses, and they, they race by, and things catch on fire because they're going so fast. Yeah, that's so. brilliant. <laughs> Man, what can't that thing do? <laughs> you know what it probably can't do? What? Come up with f-ing puns. Oh, man. <laughs> Can't can't save them if it does. Yeah. All right. I've got one right off the bat. Oh man, jump in. You'd think the Dulahan's the most badass thing in the entire world. Is right? it not? No. Because there's nothing nastier than the Dulahan's ex girlfriend. The Dulahaint. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> she rides around in one of his spectral coaches that he just didn't have the balls to go back for after they broke up. <laughs> filthy. Yeah. Yeah. Filthy Faye. Mm hmm. <laughs> Do the hate. <laughs> if he could talk. <laughs> exactly. For, for six months, all he could say was Tabitha. <laughs> I have. Now. I'm not going to claim any ownership of this pun. I'm okay. sure it's been done to death. But I've got a prophylactic for poorly endowed men, and it's called leprechaundoms. Oh, man, I smelled that one coming. <laughs> that was like the mold. Put it in your crock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did it. You just completely brought it back. Oh, because no one did that. <laughs> oh, you you absolutely rectified that. That was going to go down as like a, a a classic stink mouth groaner, and you <laughs> elevated it to magnificence. Well played. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's another uh, lesser known uh, creature of the Fae. It is just as surly as the Clericon, just as drunk, huh. but they operate most of the uh, DMVs in Chicago. It's the Clericlon. They're, cl- they're clerical workers. <laughs> they're Clericlons. <laughs> Always drunk. <laughs> Always angry. Always angry. 
at the DMV. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. I've got a bar. Okay. It's called the Brulahan. Oh, I like that. That even that took a second because I've been drinking. They <laughs> they have a slogan. Uh-huh. All beer, not much head. Oh, that is brilliant. That is, that's brilliant. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Good. That's better than the Dula Haint. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that's you win. You win this one. Tip of the cap. Tip of the cap to you, David All Flora. Right. All right. Um, a dirty bastard. We we've actually finished our our Guinness. Yeah, we didn't have to have to slam them. We didn't we didn't have to slam anything. Single tier. We got time for one more. All right. You have a uh, you have the can. I have a bottle. Yeah. So I'll use the sound effect. And I'll use this sound effect. Oh, pretty good. Oh right? man, we we literally had a discussion about what would sound better, cans or bottles. I voted cans, and I was just proven wrong because that was a great sounding <laughs> open. That wasn't bad at all. Let's uh, uh, let's keep on the train of of thinking, you guys. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Oh, oh, wait, we forgot. So wait, we made a decision, given the fact that this is our drinking podcast, and given how far over time we've gone, and how many times we've had to just blabber. Probably our last. So first off, Mel Evans. Mel Evans. We toast to you. Hey. Clink and a drink. David Flora. Oh. Who else? Should we be toasting on I would, this magnificent episode? I would like to send uh, a big old toast uh, to a fan of ours, mm-hmm. uh, new, new to Blurry Photos, Bob Mears. Oh. Uh, a great, great gentleman, uh, painter, mm-hmm. who wrote to us originally saying that he, he listened to our podcast, and uh, in particular, I think the Spring Hill Jack episode. Yeah. Oh, man, I had anxiety. Ex- mm. I had anxiety about that because... He was, he was like, hey, I listened to Spring Hill Jack, and I liked it. And then we're like, oh, we're going to stop for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't our choice. We had microphone problems. Yeah, we, we had to we had to come in and, and upgrade some stuff. Yeah, but Man, we're I back. Hope this sounds better. <laughs> we're back, and we're back because of people like Bob Mears. And people like Bob who send us puns. <laughs> Oh, I had no idea he punned us. He punned us. Let me let me lay this one on you. This is a good one. Bob says, how about a learning academy that you can attend when you want to learn how to overthrow an oppressive government? It's called the Rootin' Tootin' Rasputin' Shootin' Institution for the Solution of How to Start a Revolution. Holy shit. Oh, my God. Pretty good, right? <laughs> that one- he just set up a bunch of dominoes and just went <laughs> pink. <laughs> Holy crap, Bob Mears. That was awesome. <laughs> Man, you know, I don't know when we would do this. I don't know when you draw the line. I don't know when you like draw a close competition. <laughs> but at some point, we have to have like an Academy Awards of, of listener, listener, uh, puns. listener puns. And I'm telling you right now, Bob Mears, you are a nominee. <laughs> that's uh, that's great, and thanks uh, thanks for listening to us, Bob. We're yeah. we're back. We're better than ever. Stroke on, brother. Stroke on, painter. <laughs> we'll be coming back at you here. We got plenty plenty more stuff to go over. Oh man, we're not even close yeah. to getting this shit up. There's 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 too much out there that that we want to tell you how how not to live your life. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> We're too. I'm. I'm way too in love with the sound of my own voice to ever stop. Ever. Thanks, Greg Bach, for re- retweeting our our stuff. Oh man, Greg Bach, thank you. And Greg Bach, get your stinky butt onto the podcastosphere. I know you're recording. You're recording. I know stuff. you're doing it. You just get uh, it out there. It's 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 good to be back. It's great to be back. I'm very excited. Uh, we we've, we've got some. Pretty sweet stuff in the cut. Like I said, our our little hiatus was not of our own choosing. So we mm-hmm. are. We are no less excited to keep bringing you stuff. So I've, please come back in the very near future. Oh, I've got news. There's I, I've updated the website some. Ooh, just just little 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 things. Some technology here and there. twists. There's now an archives. Oh. oh, but there's now a brand new YouTube page <gasps> that you can get to. Well, um, but that would mean we'd have to have shot some video, David. Well. <laughs> 
I'm I'm doing my best to put on the podcast itself so that if if you're a YouTube person and then that's how you like to listen to crap, then you can put on one of our mm-hmm. playlists and listen to that. But yes, uh, there's some video that that we're gonna have to shoot or maybe we have shot. Oh, question mark that will Winky be coming face. your way. It's all about emoticons. <laughs> Anyways, if you're on YouTube or if you have a Gmail account, go ahead and subscribe to us. It'll just show a little bit more support. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, we officially didn't toast Greg Bach. Greg? So. Oh, we, we didn't. Uh, we got to toast Bob first. Oh, yeah. Bob, to you. To you, Bob. Clink Clank. and a drink. And Greg Bach. Greg Bach. Thank you. Once again, we repeat. To everybody else who pushed us over 50 likes on Facebook. Oh, yeah, we crossed the 50 mark. <laughs> if I had a dollar for every like, I could buy a little pile of DVDs. We could we could, we could buy another half of a, a boom mic stand. Oh, yeah. Those things are spendy. If you if there's something out there that you want to uh, to hear us blab about, please send it our way. Oh, yeah. If some jackwad coworker is like, oh, did you hear about this? And you're like, dude... I've got pros in my pocket that tell me about this kind of shit. I don't need to hear it from you, right. Ike. If you can find an Ike, tell us about it. That's that's weird enough in itself. Follow us on Twitter, blurry underscore photos. Yep. Like us on the Facey Books. Get it. Rate us on iTunes. Mm-hmm. Now subscribe to us on YouTube. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Even more involvement. Oh, I've got a shout outs. Oh, you do? Yep. I got a shout outs. Really unique situation in the podcast universe. I've got a, a a good friend of mine, Mark Soloff, his roommate, who, as far as I understand, is an interdimensional creature of science. Father was a meat serpent. Yeah, that's a fact. Dottore Bellardo. And they do the Blasto podcast, and it's fascinating. Hmm. Uh, it is It focuses on science and what uh, a layperson would consider to be the absurd, but really it's just applied science that our, our limited minds cannot quite comprehend. Huh. So I've been enjoying it. Oh. So thank you, Dottore, and uh, thank you, Mark, for paying your half of the rent. Add it to the list. Yep. Thanks for sticking with us, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us, everybody. <laughs> I'm spine whip cracking David Floyd. And I'm the drunk and surly version of David Stecco. <laughs> <laughs> Bye! Bye. 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 Bye.